Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today I have a thrift flip for you. I got this in uh, Goodwill on one of my huge uh, thrift hauls that I did recently, and I will put the link in the description of that thrift haul. You're going to see some stuff that you love, I guarantee it. So this is a sconce with a glass cover on it, like a hurricane cover, and I want to do this over and give it a more primitive look. Once I got all the packing tape all over it, the eagle off the top, and the sticker, I sanded it down a little bit to give it a little, the paint a little more grip. It was shiny and I wanted it to stick really well. So I'm using the Waverly uh, paint in the color ink. It is a black paint and I want to do two coats all over this sconce. I normally would only do one if I'm going to do a few different coats of different things. But I will be distressing this back, so I want to make sure that when it does distress it back, it goes back to only the black color. So having two coats will make sure of that. So I'm going to use some Vaseline or some petroleum jelly to resist the paint that I'm going to put on top, which is the uh, my top coat that I'm going to have, and then I will distress that back. So I'm going over the top of this with Waverly's Moss. This is a beautiful green color and I just love it. Um, and so I'm just going to go over this. I'm going to do two coats on this. I will not be reapplying the Vaseline over the first coat. I'm just going to wait till the first coat dries and then go ahead and do my second coat of the green moss color. I'm taking a damp rag over the top now that it is dry and wiping back what I can where I've put the Vaseline and with it being a little bit damp it will also reactivate the clay paint and it will pull off some more. So I'm just going to go ahead and go around the whole thing and wipe it back. And there you go. You can see how well it worked. I really love this distressing technique. It works so good. I love it better than trying to sand it back. So now I'm going to take a little bit of straight antique wax and go over the top and make sure that I get it all in the cracks and crevices so when I wipe it back it will sit down in there and make it look old and vintage. I wanted to do a grubby candle for this sconce, so I have this battery operated candle. I'm going to grubby up for you and show you how to do it. And then I will have a giveaway at the end that I will tell you about so that you can get your own grubby mix, Mod Podge, and some candles, some tea lights to do for yourself, and I'll show you how to do it. So this is my grubby mix that I make up with a bunch of different spices. And I'm going to take Mod Podge that's in a different container than my original container so that I don't contaminate it with spite the spice mix. And I'm just going to take a brush and brush the Mod Podge all over the candle. I'm holding the bottom and I don't typically do the bottom unless I'm going to sell them uh, individually. I It makes it easier to hold and they fit better into the candle holders without the grubby mix included. So then I go ahead and take my candle that's coated with the Mod Podge and just dump the mix all over it and get it all covered so that it sticks. Make sure that you have a candle holder nearby so that you can put it in there and let it dry. I did run a dryer over it just to see if it would dry it a little quicker and it actually did. Now you can skip this last part if you want to. This is just sealing the grubby mix in. I like to do that because that way I know the, the, the mix won't come off, but some people like to have that smell that's really strong of the mix, so they don't do it. 
but I like to. And this is what it looks like once you have sealed it in. And it works really well. And then it fits right in that hole just perfectly. I'm going to add a rusty star to the top and at the bottom around the base of the glass I'm going to make a knot in some homespun material and let that hang down and it'll give it the perfect primitive look. I found this little basket at Goodwill and it was in a bundle with two other baskets that I actually wanted. So I thought that I would try and fix this poor little basket up and make it look a little bit more, I don't know, vintage, a little more primitive. So I'm going to give it a coat of black paint all the way around. I do uh, about two coats. It's one coat and then I kind of go over it and find spots where I missed and I uh, touch it up in those spots. I went down inside just a little bit in the basket. I will be putting a little bit of a liner in there so I didn't want it to show so I thought I would paint just a little bit inside. Now I'm going to do a little bit of petroleum jelly or Vaseline around the edges to see if I can get a resist with that. I could just wipe it back with a little damp cloth when it's dry but I thought I would try it. I've never used the a Vaseline on a basket so that I would see if it worked. So now I'm going to go over it with uh, two coats of the green moss paint from Waverly and then once it's dry I go over it with a damp rag and wipe it back and see if I can get some distressing which I do. I love it. It comes back with a little bit of that black underneath and it looks great. So I have a little bit of a coffee sack left over, a small piece, so I thought that I would cut it down. I thought it would look the best inside of this basket with the green, and I decided to cut it down and put it inside the basket. So what I do is take the outside edge and glue it down to the very underneath of the basket rim as close as I can get to the top. And then once I flip it in and tuck it into the basket, it will have a nice even look across the top and you won't see any frayed edges. So I go around the hole outside, or inside I should say, with the hot glue and get that all closed off and glued in. I decided since uh, I needed to seal it and I had already put the liner on the inside, that I would just use a little bit of antique wax and go over it and see if I can get some of that to sit in there and make it look even more aged. So I brushed it on and then I went and wiped it off with my rag and pulled back as much of it as I possibly could. And I think it really came out cool looking and so aged. This cute recipe box was a thrifted find from Salvation Army and I thought it was so cute and I wanted to redo it in a more primitive way. So I sanded it back just a little bit because it was a little shiny and I wanted the paint to stick and I painted it a base coat of black.
once that was dry, I took my Mod Podge and I went over the top of the recipe box just on the front part where it had the strawberries. I'm going to give this a, a distressed look with the Mod Podge and some paint over the top. My top coat over the Mod Podge, I'm going to use the moss color uh, from Waverly. It's a beautiful green color. I just love it. And I'm going to go gently over the top of that and try not to do too many trips across and make it as smooth as possible. Now I'm going to use my dryer, my heat gun, and I'm going to try and get it to crackle just a little bit. But my main goal is to actually make the paint bubble, believe it or not. As you can see here, I'm getting it close to the paint so that it will bubble. It's uh, making the Mod Podge underneath bubble up along with the paint and it is uh, gonna create some bubbles on there so that when I uh, sand it back, those bubbles will come off and it will look like it's been distressed. So as you can see the bubbles and the little spots there and I need to let it dry a little bit so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, sand the rest of the box down and make it look distressed. And now that that is dry, I'm going to go over it with my sandpaper. Now a lot of the bubbles settled back down and stuck, but there are still a few that have popped up and that's fine. I only wanted a few and um, just to make it look like, I don't know, it was distressed. I just, just showing you a different way to make it look uh, aged. So just gently with the with the sandpaper going over the top of that. And I found a stencil that I've had kicking around. I love this one. I think I got it at Michael's. It is the chicken rooster, and then it's got the hen and the baby chicks. So I'm going to do at the bottom of my recipe box, I'm going to put a stencil of the hen and the baby chicks in a line down at the bottom. I think that's going to be so cute. I'm doing that in the black paint. I'm using a makeup sponge from Dollar Tree to put the paint on and I just dab a little bit of paint and then dab it off onto my napkin and then I just go over it gently and there you go. Look how cute that came out. So, so cute. Now I have to wait for that to dry a little bit and then I sand that back and make it look a little more distressed as well, not so bright black and there you go, all distressed, love it. Okay, let's talk about this grubby mix and see what is in it. You have the grubby spice mix in a container. You're going to get a bottle of Mod Podge. You're going to get a paintbrush and two battery operated tea lights. And there's only a few rules. You must live in the continental United States. Shipping is very expensive. You need to add grubby candle to your comment and subscribe to my channel. And that is all. Two winners will be chosen on January 11th, 2023. And good luck. And I will be posting that. The winners, I will be trying to find you in the comments. And then I will, so I'll post under that. I'll also post in my community tab. And I will try every means that I have that I can find you. And if you don't reply within uh, 24 hours, I will pick a new person to win whatever grubby kit whichever however many I need to until I get both grubby kits given away I'm working on doing a grubby kit uh, to sell on my Etsy shop 
And so I think I'm going to be doing that as well. I just haven't sat down to figure out how much it costs me to put everything together. So once I get that done, I'll let you know that that's live. And if you want to buy one of my grubby kits, you can do it that way as well. So thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have a favorite in the comments. And I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.